everybody. I'm Jason. This is Jace. This is Tennessee Mountain Homestead. And today we're back out in the shop and I'm going to be working on my Makuni TM34 flashlight carburetor again. Now on yesterday's video I had replaced the pilot jet and I made it one size leaner. Took it for a ride down the street. When I came back I was still getting a little bit of black soot on my spark plugs. So that's telling me it's still a little bit rich. So today what I'm going to try to do is adjust the needle valve that sits under the slide. Let's get the hood open on this thing. Give me just a minute to grab some tools and we'll get right into it. To adjust the main needle valve on these carburetors, you're gonna need a Phillips head screwdriver and there's two screws right on the top of the carburetor on top of the slide housing. Now that the screws are removed, the slide and the whole assembly just pulls straight up out. And that's what it looks like. Once the slide and the needle are removed from the carburetor, you're gonna wanna detach the other end of the cable. Whatever throttle or whatever device controls your throttle. You need to take the cable loose off of that in order to get that apart. In my case, it's a bicycle brake handle from a BMX bike. And I'm just going to unscrew the cable housing from the brake lever. And just like that, the cable is now slack on the other end. Now that the other end of the cable is disconnected from whatever device controls your slide, now you're gonna to wanna to take the spring and kind of bunch it up over the cable, pull it out of the slide. And then down in there, there's a piece of plastic that locks the cable end There it is. And then once that piece of plastic, this is like a retainer, and then there's the cable end, and that clips down inside the slide. So now you want to relieve the spring tension, take that piece of plastic off. There's the spring, and I'm just going to place that right here for now and just let that part hang. Next I'm going to take this slide and the needle over to the bench, take it apart and adjust it. I'll show you how next. We're over here at the bench and in order to get the needle out of the slide there's a couple of Phillips head screws down in there. No big deal. But you take your Phillips head screwdriver Simply unscrew those screws. And now the whole thing can come out. So there's your main needle. And if you notice, there's, a, there's an E-clip. And on this one in particular, I think there's five slots, four or five slots for it to go. Now, in order to make this leaner or richer it has to go up or down so by putting the spring clip higher on the needle it'll push it further down into its valve or sleeve that controls how much fuel comes up through and gets into the motor all right on closer inspection it does in fact have five positions for that e-clip to go in this case, it's on the second one from the top. So what I need to do in order to make this as lean as it can go at this point, is a pair of needle nose pliers, I pull that E-clip right off, and I'm gonna reposition it at the very top of the needle. Now that seems a little bit excessive to me, because a lot of guys that I've seen on Facebook and on the forums usually let that ride about in the middle, but if this doesn't work and it's still running rich, the only option I have left is to go with an even leaner main jet. 
which I'll have to order. So I'm gonna try this and just see what happens. And it's gonna be the reverse of how we removed it. The needle drops down in there. There's this piece right here that, that goes in. This is the cable catch that just goes right in over the needle. We just tighten our screws right back down. All right, I've got one screw on the table and I got to get it down in there. So I'm going to take my magnetizer, make this screwdriver magnetic. Hopefully these aren't stainless, let's see. I think they are, but I got it on the tip of the screwdriver. And I'm just going to push it right down in there. I got it. We'll tighten that up and we're going to put this back together. We're gonna put it back on the tractor and hopefully take this thing for a ride. We're back over at the tractor and this part's a little bit tricky. You gotta put the spring back over the cable and kind of hold it the same way you did when you took it apart. You gotta kind of bunch it up just like that. And then you gotta fish it down into the the cable holder inside the slide it's tough to see and then once it's in there you got to put your plastic piece back down in there the retainer which I just messed that up because it has to go over the cable no big deal I still got the spring held captive that's gonna go over there like that I know it's hard to see what I'm doing, you probably can't, but the plastic piece just kind of falls back down in there on its own. And the spring's gonna hold all that together. Now we're back together. This slide only goes back in the carburetor one way. Let's see if I got it the correct way. Nope, it stops. So you gotta spin it. Now it should go down in there. There we go. All right, I find it best to have a screwdriver ready to go, which I didn't, but I got the screw on the tip of the screwdriver and this makes it easier to locate the screw and push it down through where it needs to be. So that's one, I'm just going to, I'm not going to tighten it, I'm just going to tighten it down until the, the head of the screw is touching that cap. So that way I'll be able to get the other one in and push the cap down flat, thread the screw on home. Make sure these screws are just snug, they don't need to be crazy mon monkey tight or nothing. That should do it right there. And then you're gonna to wanna to reconnect the other end of the cable to whatever throttle you've got. Either it's a twist throttle, a foot throttle, whatever. In my case, it's a foot throttle, a BMX handbrake. Which I need to change. This thing, it works like, I was, like I've said in the past, but it's just, not enough resistance. I need to make a different gas pedal. Everything's all put back together. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that your throttle works correctly. In my case, it's free. It snaps back like it should. And what I'm gonna do next is fire this thing up. I'm gonna let it warm up. I'm gonna take it up to the spring again. It's about a mile up the road. Come back, pull the plugs and see what's going on. And back in a minute. All right, let's fire this thing up. I'm gonna try it with no choke today. It's been warmer out. Fuel pump, ignition. All right, the tractor's out front. It's warming up. I'm gonna go ahead and take it down the road. Unfortunately, it's raining out, but that's all right. So we gotta get data. I'll see you guys in a minute.
So we just got up to the spring. It only took a couple of minutes. I was going pretty good. It's one mile. We're gonna go one mile back, pull the plugs. So I'm back in the shop, and as you just saw from the footage out there, I was driving along, everything was fine. And all of a sudden, a bunch of smoke started coming out from the cowling here. Like white smoke, at first I thought maybe it was the belt, but because it's wet and maybe it was slipping, but it wasn't the case. What happened was, this PCV thing I made yesterday, a bunch of oil started coming up through it and I'm guessing went straight down into the air filter. It started dripping all over the, the exhaust header. Even with the wrap, it was going through and smoking and it was just blowing white smoke out. And then I couldn't get the throttle to go to, to idle down. Like something was sticking, hanging up. I don't even know guys. That was, that's the first time it's ever happened like that. And I thought that by doing all this extra stuff and not having as much suction, on the PCV that it wouldn't pull oil like it did. But it happened. So I'm gonna pull the air cleaner off and take this thing apart and start trying to figure out what happened. I went ahead and pulled everything apart. I took off the air cleaner, took off that PCV hose. I pulled the plugs. Now, I don't know how much oil actually got in the combustion chambers through the air cleaner. I don't think any did. I didn't see any smoke coming out of the exhaust. It was just dripping onto the exhaust. I'll show you that in a second. But I pulled the plugs and there's still a little black. But keep in mind, these things were black from running this thing way rich in the past and it's actually when I look close around the insulator on the electrode it's starting to get like a tan hue and that that carbon starting to go away and there's also clean marks on the electrode where there's no soot so I think we're moving in the right direction on that and I think that I do need to order the next leaner jet, maybe a couple sizes to keep experimenting. I'm going to keep going leaner because as long as it's, it's making the plugs black, I guess I'm still rich. now have the same issue with the PCV. So I'm going to have to do some more reading. I'm going to have to go back on the forums. But like I showed you guys yesterday, I put this fuel filter on the PCV hose thinking that the filter medium would stop oil from being able to advance through. I mean, I know it can get soaked and it'll go through, but it went through enough that it soaked the bottom of the air filter 
and it started dripping onto the exhaust header. And that's where all my smoke was coming from. Now, I, th I thought that there would be, having less suction would make that not as prone to happen. And if I can just back up a few seconds, this run, I did the same exact run yesterday. I drove up one mile to the spring, came straight back. That's all I did today. Only today, I think I hot dogged it just a little bit harder. I, I was running it faster for sure. I was going at least 20 miles an hour, if not faster. So that means the engine RPMs were probably pretty high. I don't know what they were, still gotta put the tack on it. But it's a common problem I have every single time I over rev this thing. And when I say over rev, I mean to cause the oil to come out of the PCV and either go in the carburetor or it just gets pushed out. I don't know if having the suction is what's causing it. So if anyone out there watches this and you have a small engine with the the same kind of a issue where PCV is, is spewing oil under high RPMs. What are you guys doing with your PCV? Should I just put a filter on the end of it and let it vent to atmosphere, have no suction, just let it vent the, the crankcase gases? Or this thing stock, the hose went up to the air box. Now granted, it was never able to go past a certain RPM, right? So I don't think it's a major issue. It's just something I need to solve. I'm not really worried about it because I know I'm, I'm, it's going to get fixed, but I just need to figure that out. And so that's pretty much going to conclude. I can't do anything else. I can't make the main jet any leaner because I don't have another one. And then the needle is maxed out lean and it's still rich. So otherwise, I appreciate you guys watching. I really appreciate it if, if somebody out there comments and lets me know. Otherwise, I'm going to be reading forums tonight. And uh, as always, I'm Jason. This is Tennessee Mountain Homestead. And I'll see you on the next one.